Hello ladies and gentlemen, a few months ago on this channel I made a video showcasing 50 of the greatest Sega Mega Drive games of all time, all of which were my personal nominations. Unfortunately, due to glitches in the YouTube algorithm, the video got caught in YouTube monetization purgatory, so I have decided to upload a new and improved version of this video featuring an extra 10 games for you to enjoy. Some of these games are titles which narrowly missed out on a spot on this list last time around. Others are games I have since played thanks to your recommendations. So sit back, relax and enjoy this trip down the Sega Mega Drive lane. Yeah. It is impossible to make a Sega Mega Drive greatest games list without including Sonic the Hedgehog titles. I personally do not think the first entry in the Sonic series is quite as good as what was to come, but this was the game that has permanently made Sega a household name. This 1991 game is particularly special to me, as after playing it around a friend's house as a youngster, I had so much fun with it that it actually made me want to upgrade from a microcomputer to one of the 16-bit home consoles. Ultimately, I chose a Super Nintendo, but if it wasn't for Sonic the Hedgehog, I may possibly have just stuck with my Amstrad CPC 464. It is truly difficult to think of many games quite as iconic and impactful as this one. Streets of Rage is another game that is synonymous with the success of the Mega Drive. This 1991 side-scrolling beat-em-up is an all-time classic. The series centres on the efforts of several heroes, in which you can play as who are on a quest to rid a city from the rule of a crime syndicate. Streets of Rage is a really solid, almost arcade-like experience, which features some of the best music and atmosphere on the system. But in terms of Streets of Rage games, or bare knuckle as it's known as in Japan, the best was still to come. I have to say I do like a good Japanese space shooter, and Thunder Force 3 fits the mould absolutely perfectly. This scrolling shooter game, developed by Technosoft, is the third chapter in the Thunder Force series, which saw a release in 1990. The player is allowed to choose which of the initial five planets to start on, and after the first five stages are completed, the game continues for three more stages. If you like your space shooters, this is one of the better ones on the Sega Mega Drive. Battletoads vs Double Dragon is a fun side-scrolling beat-em-up brought to us by the people at Rare. This game is evidence that quality titles can be found from this British development house away from the mighty Super Nintendo, within the confines of the 16-bit era. The game was released in 1993, just one year before the release of Donkey Kong Country, and the time frame in which Rare titles became Nintendo exclusives. This is a fantastic little game. Musha is a game in which I saw mentioned a hell of a lot in the comments section of the old version of this video. Whilst this is a game I was familiar with, it was just one of those titles I had never got round to playing. But, thanks to all of your reing and peer pressure, I gave this game a go, and it was a very decent shooter. The game is decent and I suppose worthy of this list. However, to me it did feel like a little bit of a Tesco value version of Blazing Lasers on the Turbo Graphics 16, Kanye West's favourite game. So maybe good old Ken West would like this one too. Disney's Aladdin is a platform video game developed and published by Virgin Games, based on the 1992 film of the same name. This game features some of the most gorgeous animations in all of 2D gaming history, and is certainly one of the better games which has seen a release based on a film. This game was outrageously popular at the time, and was in fact the third best-selling MD game of all time, which is crazy when you think about it, as I wouldn't consider this game one of the more talked about games today. Despite this though, this stunning game is extremely deserving of your time, so why not give it a go? Mega Bomberman is a rehash of Bomberman 94, which saw a release on the PC Engine. The PC Engine version was developed by Hudson Soft and the Mega Drive's version was redeveloped by Whetstone. This game is just your average Bomberman affair, but with this being the only appearance of the character on the Mega Drive, this game had to make the list. The Mega Drive port has some differences too, its PC Engine counterpart, such as fewer options in multiplayer and some different music, 
Overall, this Bomberman game is pretty mega, I suppose. Comic Zone is amongst the most unique looking games I have ever played. This 1995 beat em up video game, developed and published by Sega, has the unusual feature in that it is set within the panels of a comic book. I have to say I have always found this game extremely difficult. However, everything looks so beautiful that the game repeatedly has me returning for more. It is a shame that Sketch, the game's leading protagonist, has never seen a return for a sequel. Alien Storm, released on the console in 1991, is a port from a 1990 arcade beat-em-up that featured the same name. The story of the game sees a homicidal alien race invading Earth, and the only thing that stands between them and world domination are a special forces team known as the Alien Busters. Each playable character has unlimited usage of various short-range attacks, i.e. punches and kicks. Along with these standard attacks, each character also has their own individual weapons too. Overall, a fun, satisfying game that in my opinion is very worthy of this list. Wonder Boy 3, Monster Lair, not to be confused with the Dragon's Trap, made it to the Mega Drive in 1990. The game balances basic concepts found in both platformers and arcade shooters. The player is able to jump and shoot projectiles from a sword, and he must ride a flying dragon and confront large bosses throughout the second half of each round. This is a bright, colourful, fun game and a great early title for the system. Castlevania New Generations, or Bloodlines as it's known as in North America, is perhaps my favourite Castlevania game of all time. Everything about this game is sublime, especially hearing Castlevania music on the Mega Drive. In this 1994 title, the player proceeds through each level, defeating enemies and collecting gems to power special weapons. Each stage is sectioned and has a sub-boss battle in the middle with a main boss battle at the end. This is a really, really solid Castlevania title, and when looking at the quality of this game, it's kind of a shame that this is the only one on the system. Next up, we have Sonic the Hedgehog 2, probably my favorite Sonic the Hedgehog game on the Mega Drive. This 1992 game is more polished than its predecessor, and features the debut of Sonic's furry bloody sidekick, Tails. The game feels like it is designed much better than its prequel, as this time the game actually seems to allow you to run fast much more often than previously. There are no marble zones here to ruin your speedy momentum. If you play a Sonic game, you've got to go fast after all. Earlier in this video, we mentioned Aladdin with its beautiful smooth animation. Another game in this boat is Earthworm Jim. In this 1994 side-scrolling platformer, you play as Earthworm Jim in a strange world that consists of platforming and shooting gameplay. The game features 90s surreal humour and all of an edgy art style. Earthworm Jim was highly popular on release and the franchise spawned a range of merchandise and a TV show. I love Earthworm Jim, he is such a super guy. From one run and gun game to the next, next on this list we have Gunstar Heroes. This game was developed by Treasure and released in 1993 and is amongst the most freeing games on the entire Mega Drive platform. In this game, you play as a mercenary family out to stop the Empire, a dictatorship that seeks to revive an ancient weapon by using the power of four gems hidden throughout the planet. The first four stages of the game can be played in any order, from a stage select screen, and there are four different basic weapon types the player can choose from at the beginning of the game. This is such a fun playthrough experience, and one of a few games developed by Treasure which I shall be featuring on this list. My favourite home console version of Marble Madness is EA's port of the game on the Mega Drive. Marble Madness is a 1984 isometric platform game in which the player manipulates an on-screen marble from a third-person perspective. In the arcade version of the game, you play using a trackball. However, in this version, you use the humble controller. I have put a lot of time into this version over the years, and I have even completed this game a few times over, which if you have played this game, you would know is not an easy feat. Another fluid shooter on the platform is Biohazard Battle. In this game, you play as a strange abomination of nature and shoot your way through some beautiful scenery. The gameplay scrolls nicely, the enemies explode satisfyingly, and the music has an immersive tempo. The game features everything you would want really from a game of this genre. Turtles The Hyperstone Heist is a game which I have always failed to really pay much attention to, simply due to the fact that I have a copy of Turtles in Time on the Super Nintendo and have the arcade version of the game on my main cabinet too. 
Hyperstone Heist though is surprisingly decent in its own right, and I felt the game looks extremely impressive considering it is on Mega Drive hardware. The game looks physically even more impressive than the likes of Streets of Rage, so I strongly urge you to give this game a play. Rolling Thunder 2 by Namco is somewhat of a run and gun platformer which features careful timing and the preservation of your ammo. In some ways the game kind of reminds me of Sunset Riders, only at a slower and more tactical pace. This is a decent game with an interesting aesthetic appeal, one in which everyone should check out. Splatterhouse 2, published by Namco in 1992, is the direct sequel to Splatterhouse on the PC Engine, which we talked about on this channel a few weeks ago. Splatterhouse 2 features a gameplay very similar to the first game. The player controls Rick through eight different stages, each two-dimensional. Rick's attacks remain largely unchanged, able to punch, kick, jump kick and slide kick, as well as use several weapons scattered throughout the levels. From my experience, I found this Mega Drive game more enjoyable than its NEC predecessor. Everything about it just seems just that little bit more polished. Alicia Dragoon is a 1992 platform game developed by Game Arts. The player controls Alicia, a young woman who is on a quest to avenge her father and save the world. You can fire lightning from her hands and summon four fateful beasts to aid her. The game consists of eight levels of side-scrolling environments. Alicia has to jump across gaps and kill the enemies that stand in her way, then go on to face a boss at the end of each stage. The game is yet another fun side-scrolling romp within the Sega Mega Drive library. One of the most famous franchises on the Sega Mega Drive was Golden Axe. Golden Axe is a side-scrolling arcade beat-em-up game released in 1989 by Sega. The game places the player in control of one of three warriors, each bent on the revenge against the vile dictator Death Adder. Progression is made through the game by hacking and slashing your way through Adder's forces. Aiding the characters in this quest is their abilities to cast spells that hurt all enemies on the screen. Whilst definitely not the best side-scrolling beat em up on the Mega Drive, the game is definitely one of the most iconic. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine is literally Poyo Poyo disguised in a Sonic themed package for us Westerners who didn't have a clue what the series was. I had my first experience in a similar manner via the procurement of Kirby's Ghost Trap on the Super Nintendo. The game is literally Poyo Poyo, one of the most fun puzzle games that has ever been created. If for whatever reason you have not played any Poyo Poyo, then I demand that you change that now and give the game like Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine a try. Micro Machines was always a game I enjoyed playing around friends' houses when I was a small child, and when I got a little bit older and got a Mega Drive of my own in the future, the game did not disappoint. There are a range of Micro Machine games on the Mega Drive, all of which play very similarly, but it is the original Codemasters 1991 game that I always find myself going back to. Micro Machines is a top-down racing game where the players race in environments such as breakfast and pool tables, work desks and tree houses, driving toy vehicles such as power boats, helicopters, Formula 1 cars and tanks that can shoot other racers. This game's simplicity does not really seem to age. Beyond Oasis is a 1994 action RPG video game developed by Ancient. The game has action-adventure elements similar to the Legend of Zelda series. The player controls Prince Ali and takes him across the map to fulfil his quest. Along the way, the player picks up special items to restore health and magic, special weapons to help defeat enemies, and four magic spirits found in shrines to aid Prince Ali's mission. This is another beautiful-looking game within the Mega Drive's library. Imagine if Link to the Past had looked this good, eh? The Mega Drive has a fantastic port of Ghouls and Ghosts, which I may add is a completely different game to Super Ghouls and Ghosts which was published on the Super Nintendo. In this outrageously difficult game, the player controls the Knight Arthur, who must advance through a series of eerie levels and defeat a number of undead and demonic creatures in his quest to restore all the people killed by Lucifer. So why not screech your way through this game? 1993 saw the release of Rocket Knight Adventures by Konami, a mascot style platformer which is a lot of fun to play. Gameplay is often a side scrolling platform with linear run through levels. Your character is able to jump, attack with his sword either directly or by shooting enemies forward when swung, or charge up your rocket pack and go flying in one of 8 standard directions. Levels are occasionally switched up with alternate styles of gameplay, including some of which are horizontal scrolling shooters, another fantastic addition to the Mega Drive's library. 
Toja Amano is an action game developed back in 1991. The game is set on Earth, which is represented by randomly generated islands that float in space, each one a layer above the last. They are connected by elevators. Some islands contain pieces of spacecraft wreckage, of which the player must collect 10 to win the game. The game can be highly addictive and is quite unique in its presentation. 1994 saw the release of Capcom's Super Street Fighter 2, probably the greatest fighter on the entirety of the Mega Drive platform. This was released on the platform at the same time as it came out on the Super Nintendo 2, which was massive thinking back, especially considering Sega fans had to wait longer than Nintendo fans to see a Street Fighter game at all on the platform. This version of the game allows you to take control of 16 different fighters, including new additions to the roster such as Long and Kami. This game is a must own for Mega Drive procurers. Road Rash 2 is my favourite Road Rash game on the Mega Drive, however it is not quite as good as the Road Rash game on the 3DO in my opinion. In this somewhat of a precursor to GTA, you compete in races through beautiful landscapes as you kick and punch your way to victory in the heat of competition. This is a wonderful game and amongst the most memorable on the system. Elemental Master is a side-scrolling shooter with a difference, as you play as a person as opposed to a vehicle, like in the majority of games within this genre. Throughout this game, you must palpatine your way to success, as you make your way through the somewhat challenging levels. I died a lot in this game, but continuously found myself coming back for more. I suppose the game is kind of like an auto-scrolling version of Pocky and Rocky on the Super Nintendo. 1991's The Cap Attack by Vic Tokai is a westernised version of the Japanese platform game known as Magical Flying Hat, which again was skinned as Kid Cool on the NES and Psycho Fox on the Master System. The player controls a living mummy named Chuck D. Head through various side-scrolling levels in an effort to battle an underground army led by Max D. Captain's levels contain many enemies and hazards that can harm or kill Chuck. Overall, this game contains a lot of charm. Streets of Rage 2, released in 1992, is argued by many to be the greatest game on the entire Mega Drive platform. And looking at the quality of this game, it is quite hard to argue against those people. The first instalment in the series was already fantastic and this game just builds on everything the previous game included. This arcade style beat em up is as good if not better than most of which you would have been able to play in the arcades back in the day. A truly special game which is extremely worthy of its reputation. Shining Force is a 1992 fancy turn based tactics role playing video game. Essentially the game is just Fire Emblem but for the Mega Drive which could have never have been a bad thing. Whilst primarily a traditional fantasy themed game it contains some science fiction elements. The game features a mix of tactical battles mixed with more traditional JRPG mechanics such as visiting towns and villages and talking to NPCs. Fire Emblem games were not being released in the West until the GameCube era, so once upon a time Shining Force games were the premier turn based tactics games in the West. Truxton is a 1988 arcade game which saw a port to the Sega Mega Drive in 1989. Like many other scrolling shooters, the game is set in outer space, where the player takes control of a small spaceship across several planets. Megatech magazine sums up this game perfectly by stating it's a good solid blast which offers players a lot of action, speed and excitement. Cheeky Cheeky Boys is a side scrolling action game released for the arcades by Capcom in 1990 which also saw a release on the Sega Mega Drive. The game takes the form of a scrolling platform game, with the player controlling the characters of twins. The game is yet another fine example of great platforming which can be found on the system. Ghostbusters was developed by Compile in 1990. This is a run and gun game in which the player takes control of squat cartoon representations of three of the four Ghostbusters from the movie. This is a surprisingly decent game, especially when you consider how poor most moving tie-in games are. I suppose though this is probably helps that this game was not released until years after the first two movies had already been made. Rise Star is a side-scrolling platform game that never saw release until 1995, making it one of the later games on the platform. Whilst at first glance this game may look a lot like Sonic the Hedgehog, the game differs by focusing less on jumping and speed and more on the uses of Rystar's stretchy arms, which can reach in 8 different main directions. 
Personally, I think that Rystar is even better than any of the Sonic games on the platform, and this is a crying shame that we never got to see a Rystar 2 down the line. Unlike with Street Fighter 2, Sunset Riders on the other hand made it to the Mega Drive way before it made its way to the Super Nintendo. This 1991 arcade game found a place on the Mega Drive by 1992. This is a side-scrolling run-and-gun video game developed and released by Konami. The game is set in the American Old West, where the player takes control of a bounty hunter who is seeking the rewards offered for various criminals. This is yet another fine example of Konami's greatness on the Mega Drive. Landstalker is an action-adventure game that was developed by Climax Entertainment. You play as Nigel, the treasure hunter, who is tasked with searching for clues that lead to the treasure of King Null. This is accomplished primarily by travelling through both outdoor areas and dungeons. All gameplay and plot advancing scenes take place in an isometric view. Much of the game's dungeons and overworld are filled with monsters, mostly creatures from fantasy and mythology like ogres, skeletons, ghosts, golems and more. Many may be avoided or killed for gold or other collectibles, while others must be killed to advance the plot of the game. Landstalkers looks fantastic as well. I mentioned Gunstar Heroes earlier on this list. Another fantastic game by Treasure is Dynamite Heady, released in 1994. Dynamite Heady is a platform game in which the player takes control of Heady, a puppet with a detachable head. Heady can jump and throw his head in any direction to attack enemies. His head can also be used to grab hooks and pull himself up onto platforms. The game is bright, colourful, fun and creative. Basically everything you expect from a treasure game really. Like the second, the third entry in the Splatterhouse series can also be found on the Mega Drive. This 1993 title plays different to its predecessors. The game features six levels, many taking place in the mansion. Instead of the side-scrolling action of the previous games, Splatterhouse 3 features non-linear exploration throughout several different rooms, forcing Rick to often backtrack as he tries to find the exit. The combat in this game feels more like Streets of Rage than a traditional Splatterhouse game. I guess this game can be considered somewhat of a brush of fresh air for the series, but personally, I still prefer the earlier games. Kid Chameleon is another side-scrolling platformer on this list. Within this game, Kid Chameleon moves through the game's levels and gains access to masks that transform him into many different characters, hence the name Kid Chameleon. This is a solid platforming affair which is somewhat undersung amongst the Mega Drive's classics. In my extremely humble opinion, Rolling Thunder 3 builds on everything the previous entry in the series offered. The story is presented in a more cinematic fashion than the previous games, featuring animated cutscenes between stages and on-screen text dialogue between the characters. Psycho Pinball is a game I played the crap out of on DOS as a child, on my Windows 95 computer. This is a decent pinball title which offers four different tables to play on. Playing this title will hopefully make you forget about how disgustingly awful Sonic's pinball was, as these two games are like chalk and cheese in terms of quality. If you like pinball games, you will not be disappointed with this one. Sonic the Hedgehog 3, as the name suggests, is the third main entry in the Sonic series. This 1994 release once again attempts to top its previous two entries, this time coming with an entirely new game engine. In this game, Sonic and Tails must once again retrieve the Chaos Emerald to stop Death Egg from relaunching. While making rounds with the island's guardian, Knuckles the Echidna, who is much better than Shadow by the way, who is essentially just a um, Sonic painted black with a frown. Mega Turrican is my personal favourite Turrican game. In this 1993 game, you have to complete numerous large levels, always searching for secrets to pick up and enemies to shoot. This is an extremely fun and satisfying run and gun shooter, and amongst the very best on the entire system. It is a shame that Mega Turrican is starting to become so outrageously expensive these days. From one run and gun to the next, Earthworm Jim 2 saw a late release in 1995. This game is in my opinion superior to the first Earthworm Jim game in every way. The purpose of the game is largely the same as it was in the original Earthworm Jim, where you traverse through the levels in order to save Princess What's Her Name and defeat the game's numerous enemies, namely Psycro. Whilst the majority of the levels are still based on run and gun and platformer game elements, separate levels incorporate different gameplay elements as well. Truly a special game. 
1991 saw the release of Golden Axe 2, another side-scrolling beat-em-up in the Golden Axe series. This version of the game was a Mega Drive exclusive rather than an arcade port. Though the characters and gameplay were virtually unchanged from the first game, there were a few improvements, for example the back attack for each character was changed to more useful attacks that hit enemies on all sides. Shinobi 3 Return of the Ninja Master is an action game and my personal favourite in the Shinobi series. It is a direct sequel to the previous Revenge of Shinobi game. Compared to its predecessor, the action is considerably smoother, with less emphasis on difficulty and more on speed. In addition to the ability to run from place to place, the player character comes equipped with a new array of moves and techniques, including a mid-air dash kick, the ability to jump, scale walls and a powerful running slash that renders him temporarily invincible to projectiles, a fine addition to the Mega Drive's library. 1994 saw the release of Streets of Rage 3, the third entry in the series. The game yet again is a side scroll and beat em up. To be honest, the game does not offer many improvements on the previous entries. However, if you look at the game and try and judge it on its own merits, there is still a fun beat em up here. Mega Man The Wily Wars was released in 1994. The game essentially gives the first three Mega Man games from the NES the Mario All-Star treatment in this graphically enhanced compilation. After finishing these three games, you then have the opportunity to attack new levels with the power-ups you have gained when you take on the Wily Tower. This game never saw a release on US soil, and the power version of the game is one of the most expensive Mega Drive titles in existence. McDonald's Treasure Land Adventure is a platform video game created by Treasure. The game follows the adventures of Ronald McDonald in an attempt to find four pieces of a treasure map, and ultimately the treasure to which it leads. This side-scrolling platformer consists of four stages, each consisting of platforming sequences, a boss fight and a story-related sequence. This game features the same treasure magic as other games they developed on the Mega Drive, so give this game a try, I'm loving it. James Pond 2, codenamed Robocod, was released on the Mega Drive and on a number of other systems in 1991. In this British game, James's body armour enables him to extend his body vertically to incredible lengths and grab hold of the ceiling or platform above him. This allows him to travel along the ceiling and drop down on the top of unsuspected enemies or to get to otherwise inaccessible areas. Whilst not the greatest of side-scrolling platformers on the system, it is still one of the better ones. Zombies, released in 1994, is a run-and-gun video game developed by LucasArts and published by Konami. The game plays from almost a top-down perspective, and the player must navigate through suburban neighbourhoods, shopping malls, haunted castles and other areas, destroying a variety of horror movie monsters, including vampires, werewolves and huge demonic babies. The game was not an immediate success on release, but has become a cult classic over the years due to the game's quality. Thunder Force 4 is another horizontal shoot 'em up in this 1992 game the levels scroll horizontally automatically and the player can also explore up and down to scroll the screen vertically and reveal a larger playing field. The player can change the speed of their ship at any time for easier manoeuvrability. Thunder Force 4 is one of the premier space shooters on the Mega Drive with amazing graphics to complement the game's overall quality. In 1990, the Sega Mega Drive received the best home version of the arcade game Strider. This side-scrolling game was developed by Capcom. Your character can perform numerous acrobatic feats depending on the button combination used. Strider is an epic game that should be experienced by all. Shining Force 2 was released in 1993 and built on everything the first instalment in the series brought to the table. The game is much longer than the first and more free roaming. There is no chapter system so the player can return to previously visited parts of the world. There are also two different ways of promoting many characters. This is one fine tactical role playing game. Even if GamePro panned the game back in the day, stating the use of turn based combat instead of real time combat makes battles um, slow and cumbersome. Game journalists have always been complete idiots, eh? Contra Hard Corps, released in 1994, is yet another fantastic run and gun game amongst the Mega Drive library. Released as Pro Protector in Europe and Australia, this was the first Contra game to feature on a Sega platform. The game is simple as the objective of each stage of the game is to reach the end by shooting at every enemy that gets in the way, and to fight the boss awaiting at the end. This game offers run and gun bliss and is a must play for all Sega Mega Drive owners. 
Sonic and Knuckles, released in 1994, is the direct sequel to Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Sonic and Knuckles was originally intended to be half of Sonic 3. However, due to time constraints and the cost of a large memory capacity cartridge, Sega split the project into two. So with this in mind, the game is basically just Sonic 3 but with um, different levels. Oh, and of course you can play as Knuckles 2 now. So overall, another fine addition to the Sonic collection. Alien Soldier is another run and gun game, this time developed by Treasure. This 1995 title is outrageously expensive to procure today due to its overall quality and the fact that it came out very late in the Mega Drive's life cycle. The gameplay has been compared heavily to Gunstar Heroes, however putting a much larger emphasis on boss fights. The stages are notably shorter, populated with weak enemies to serve as downtime between the more difficult boss fights. I wonder why this game doesn't seem to get the same amount of love on YouTube as some of the other titles by Treasure. Who knows? So, ladies and gentlemen, that was my list of my 60 favourite Sega Mega Drive games. A system with a library so great and so deep that I missed out loads of quality titles from this list. So, before I go, let me know in the comment section which games I should have included in the list. I am sure at least one or two of you will still be screeching about Fantasy Star. What are your favourite Mega Drive games? Let us discuss it down below. If you like this video, do not forget to like the video and subscribe for in-depth retro gaming content on this channel every single week. Also, if you want to receive every video I make straight to your phone, then make sure you hit the notification bell to stay notified. My channel, Top Hat Gaming Man, is partly funded from the fantastic support and donations I receive from my lovely Patreon benefactors. So shout outs to Carl Johnson, Shizuka Kobayashi, Stuart McDermott, Greg Hooper, Harold Webb, Synth Spaces, Kevin Verhaley, David Mountford, Andrew Bazanski, Edward O'Reilly, Michael Keneally, Tom Elliott, Mark S. Hines, Gary Pinkett, The Gaming Muso, Sponge Matt B, Quang DX, and all of our other patrons. You people motivate me to no end when it comes to pumping in a hell of a lot of my spare time into making these videos. So as always, from the bottom of my heart, thank you ever so much. Cheerio.